Hello, my name is Paul Stetchik with Northeast Power Systems, also known as NEPSI, NEPSI. What I'm standing in front of here is a DS1 transient free capacitor switch. It's manufactured by ABB. Uh, this particular switch is going to be uh, is going to be lined up against an ABB switchgear lineup. It was designed for that specific purpose. If uh, you need a DS1 switch to be uh, manufactured and lined up against your equipment, feel free to contact Northeast Power Systems. Uh, you can also find more information about this DS1 on our website. Uh, what you're looking at here is the front of the enclosure, and uh, you can see we have plenty of signage. Uh, this is the operation panel. This is just providing indication. We also have an amp meter for monitoring the strip heaters. Uh, if we open up the enclosure here, uh, you can see we have a maintenance panel. We got the actual DS1 switch below, and we have an incoming fuse compartment with current limiting fuses. So the transient free switching device is manufactured by ABB. It's a 600 amp 15 kV device. That's the maximum voltage that it goes to. It's got a BIL rating of 95 kV and a momentary current rating of 20 kA with a 0.5 second uh, time limit on that value. Uh, it's, it performs transient free switching in both current and voltage. This is different than what you would get with a zero voltage closing device and also different than what you would get with a pre-insertion resistor device. Zero voltage closing relies upon the timing of vacuum contacts closing at a precise moment at zero closing. Pre-insertion resistor technology relies upon a resistor uh, that gets inserted into the circuit prior to the uh, energization of the circuit, which reduces the transient but does not limit, uh, eliminate the transient. The DS1 switch uses the natural commutation characteristics of a diode to perform transient free switching of capacitor banks, noted in A through C on this slide. While closing, a main set of contacts are first closed, bringing the diode into the circuit, timing it such that the diode is in the reverse bias state. When the system voltage becomes forward biased, the diode conducts current with no transient voltage, no transient current, and no possibility of free strike. After this commutation process, a bypass contact is closed. The same sort of switching sequence occurs on opening, but in reverse order. When the diode is in the forward bias state, the, by the bypass contact is opened, forcing current flow through the diode, allowing the diode to commutate the current off as it goes into reverse bias state. Thus, no transient voltage and no transient current and no chance for a restrike and no limit on the number of operations while in the reverse bias state, the main contact opens. Another advantage of the DS1 switch is it does not require transient interrupt reactors that would typically be required for back-to-back -back capacitor bank switching applications. The waveforms shown here show the switching performance of a DS1 in operation for a 10 megabar 13.8 kV capacitor bank under a back-to-back -back switching operation. As you can see here, there is no transient on closing or on opening in either the voltage or the current waveforms. Uh, let me bring it into the enclosure here to show you some more details. What you're looking at here is a fuse compartment. Remember the uh, DS1 is, is a 20 kA momentary rating, so we put a set of current limiting fuses here to bring that rating to a higher value. These are rated 63 kA, our current limiting fuses by SIVA. What you see here are uh, micro switches for detecting a blown fuse condition. This is a dielectric push rod that activates a micro switch down here to indicate that a fuse has operated. This is communicated through a uh, Schweitzer I.O. module located in the control compartment here. Also what you see here is a voltage sensor. The voltage sensor for the DS1 must be located on phase A for this to operate correctly. 
What you see up on top is the bus bars passing in from the incoming compartment, and we'll show you that in just a moment. You go down here. This is the control panel. Here you can see we have a Schweitzer I.O. module. This allows for remote operation of the DS1, and it also allows for the monitoring of uh, the I.O. associated with the DS1. Bring it around the front, Matt. So what you're looking at here is the incoming and outgoing compartment. Uh, here we have our load bus bars. We can have either bottom entry or top entry for the load bus bars. And here you're looking at the source bus bars. So these will go to the voltage source. The voltage source always goes to the top side of the DS1. It's critical that that be uh, the connection mode. Uh, source side always to the top side. And the load side going to the capacitor bank, always on that load side. Uh, you can see that we insulate the bus bars. We have grounding balls here for grounding the capacitor bank on the load bus. Uh, we have uh, uh, supports for both the incoming and outgoing cables here and up there. Uh, the, uh, we have it, typically we have a barrier here, but uh, for the purpose of this video, we are showing the connections can be accessed uh, by the removal of this barrier here. So, when, before installing this equipment and while installing this equipment, uh, it is important uh, that you pay attention to phase rotation. The DS1 requires ABC phase rotation. Uh, we label the bus bars very clearly ABC to make sure that that is done. Uh, the harmonic filter reactors and inrush reactors must be located on the line side of the DS1. Line side of DS1. It is not okay to have the DS1 switch a filter bank or switch capacitor bank or train the inrush reactors. Those devices must be located on the line side with DS1. The capacitor bank must be connected Y ungrounded, a Y ungrounded capacitor bank. And uh, there is a homing procedure which basically puts the, uh, the, the DS1 into operation. That must be performed before putting this bank into full operation. Uh, and that is done by putting the DS1 into a maintenance mode, doing a homing device, and then the system is ready to go. So if you're interested in this product, feel free to contact NEPSI or go to our webpage and learn more about it. Thank you.